Hello, welcome to this third video in the series on optimization. In the first video, we looked at what a local max and a local min was and how to find critical points and how to classify them. In the second video, we looked at an example of that. Now, in this third video, the last of the series, we're going to look at absolute maximum, and absolute minimum values. First off, definition wise, what is an absolute maximum? Well, um, a local maximum was the smallest, or the, min, the, the max, the, the biggest that the function got in some nearby neighborhood. But an absolute max is going to be the biggest that the function ever gets in some domain of the function, in the domain, in the domain of the function. Okay. And then there's absolute minimum, the smallest that the function ever gets in the domain of the function. Now, what we usually do is we don't allow all possible X and Y in the domain. What we normally do is we restrict the domain. We look at some reasonable kind of a region that's based off of a boundary that is linear. So here's an example. So this multivariable function that I like to find the absolute max and the absolute min of the biggest that the function ever gets and the smallest that the function ever gets, but not everywhere in the domain, but only on the square that goes with x is from minus 1 to 1 and y is from minus 1 to 1, 2 by 2 square. So uh, here is a just a, a, a picture, a visual of this function over that square. And what we see happening is that there is the smallest that the function ever gets. And then there is the largest that the function ever gets. It happens twice. They can happen more than once. It's perfectly fine. So the absolute maximum occurs at those points. The z value is the absolute maximum value. And the absolute minimum occurs at these points. Um, we're not going to do this particular question, but I just want you to see the visual behind um, what's going on. We need to dig a little deeper and understand, well, how can we guarantee this? Like, how do we know for sure that we're able to find these guys? And with their everything, just try to remember what you did back in Calc 1. With Calc 1, you had an interval. Um, you had an interval on the x-axis. You set some x equals a to x equals b. And what you did there was you went to find any kind of critical point that was inside of that interval. And that was a possible uh, candidate to lead to an absolute max, an absolute min, uh, or an absolute min. And then you had the, uh, the endpoints. So now we need to do the 3D analog to that. OK, so um, what, what made us guaranteed to have it back then was the extreme value theorem. As long as your interval was closed and bounded, that, that's, um, that was enough to guarantee it. Just that it exists, not that how to find it, but just that it exists. So now we need the 3D analog to that. So now instead of an interval, we have a region in the XY plane. We need that region to be closed. Now, officially what that means is that it includes its boundary. Um, but we also need that to be bounded. Now, what does bounded mean? Bounded means that when you're when you're inside of there or even on the boundary, the function doesn't go off to infinity or down to minus infinity, grow unbounded. The function doesn't do that. OK. And so um, if we are both of these at the same time, then there's a multivariable version of the extreme value theorem that says, um, well, that's all you need. You need a, a closed and a bounded region. And that's enough to say that you will guarantee find some X and Y points inside or on that boundary, inside the region or on the boundary that lead to the absolute maximum or the absolute minimum of the function. Tells us that they exist, doesn't tell us how to find them. So let's learn how to find them in the next slide. It's exactly what you did back then. OK, your first step, look out for critical points that are inside the region. They have to lie inside the region. OK, if they lie outside the region, we don't care about. OK, we're talking about having some defined region in the X, Y plane, which is a sort of a um, restricted domain, it's called. So look for critical points on the inside. How do you find critical points? You know, back when we had done it just a few um, videos ago, it's about taking the x partial, taking the y partial, setting them equal to zero simultaneously, possibly checking to see where they're undefined at. And that leads to a critical point. If that critical point lies inside, 
it gets included as a possibility to lead to an absolute max or an absolute min. Okay. Secondly, then we need to look on the boundary. And that's what we did back in um, Calc 1. We looked at the endpoints. Well, now it's, it's an entire series of endpoints on the boundary. Now, what happens there, since we're going to stick to nice linear boundary um, lines, you know, that, that makes the boundary, then what that does for you, it actually turns your, your function then, um, at least over that, over that line, it turns your function into a single variable function. And it's a Calc 1 question. You could solve it without trouble, hopefully. So any of those guys that are on the boundary that lead to a max or a min, say your boundary is some kind of parabola. Your function is a parabola on the boundary. If there's a max there, you should include it. It could be possibly the absolute max or the other way around. So on the list, if you're a critical point, on your list, if you're extreme value on the boundary, and then finally, on your list, if you're a corner point, we're using lines as our boundary curves, well, lines meet up at a corner, so um, corner points that that uh, maybe didn't come up in, in part two, they, they then are included as well. Three different types of candidates that could lead to the absolute maximum or the absolute minimum value. You take all these candidates, they're in the club, and they throw them and, 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 and now we throw them into the function, we find out then who is the largest, who gives the largest Z value and who gives the smallest Z value. We're guaranteed that one of these guys in this mix will, maybe multiple ones will, we don't know. All right, okay, we're at seven minutes, let's give it a try. So we have this function here, just simple, X squared plus XY. And we're on this interval, where uh, it's a rectangle, uh, x is between minus two and two, y is between minus one and one. Okay, there's your region. Not the entire xy plane, which is the domain of this function, just this one rectangle. Okay, great. Part one, critical point that might be on the inside. Take the x partial, set it equal to zero. Take the y partial, set it equal to zero. So the x partial is 2x plus y, and the y partial is x. If both of these are equal to 0 simultaneously, coming from the y partial, we know that means x equals 0. And then, coming, then taking that information to the x partial, that means y is also going to be 0. The origin on the list gets into the club. All right, great. Next up, you want to look for... Um, extreme values on the boundary. The boundary is made up of nice vertical and horizontal lines, which we can define the, the, the equations for. It. And once we do that, then what we're doing is only looking above that line. Okay, going up to the function, seeing what the function is doing right above that line. And for us, it's nice, um, nice equations for these lines where we have uh, line number one is the, is the line x equals negative two. Just number them in some kind of way to distinguish them. X equals negative 2. Go back to your function and plug in a negative 2. It's no longer a single variable. We know X is stuck on negative 2, and we can check then what the function is doing. But the function is linear. You take the derivative there, set it equal to 0. It's never going to happen. So line 1 has no extra extreme points. But line two does. When y equals one, your function then becomes x squared plus x. And for sure, take the derivative, two x plus one, set it equal to zero. Negative one half is the x value that goes along with y equals one. Extreme point on the boundary. All right. Moving on to line three, it's going to work just like line one did. It's going to leave it to some non, no way to make the derivative equal to zero. Line number four is going to act a lot like line number two did. Line number four's equation is uh, y equals negative one. Plugging that into the function, you'll get x squared minus x. Derivative is 2x minus one. This time, that's equal to zero when x is a half. When x is a half and y is negative one, that's a critical point that, I mean, not a critical point, but that's an extreme 
uh, a possibility co coming from an extreme value on the boundary. Three different possibilities. Critical point inside, in the club. These two guys here, extreme points on the boundary, in the club. What's left? Corner point, in the club. Let's throw them all in. Check the Y value, check the Z value. Whoever gives it the biggest, absolute max. Whoever gives it the smallest, absolute min. Okay, so critical points on the inside, we have uh, the origin. What do you get when you plug the origin in to the function? A zero out. Um, extreme points on the boundary, we had two of them. Uh, negative a half and positive one. Um, positive a half and negative one. So let's do the negative a half and positive one into the function. Um, negative a half gives you a, uh, uh, for x, that gives you a fourth. And then you um, take away a half from that. You end up with a negative a fourth. And then um, positive a half and negative one goes in. You also get a negative a fourth. Okay, great. Corner points. What are these corner points? I didn't label them before, but, you know, we could figure them out, right? We have... Um, these guys here, negative 2 and 1 and negative 2 and negative 1, 2 and 1, 2 and negative 1. So let's do negative 2 and 1. Uh, plug it into the function. 4 minus 2. You get a 2. 2 and negative 1. 4 minus 2. You get a 2. 2 and 1 would be 4 plus 2. You get a 6. And negative 2 and negative 1, 4 plus 2. You get a 6. So, we're done. Who's the biggest? Who's the smallest? The absolute minimum value, negative one-fourth, comes from those two points. The absolute maximum value, six, comes from those two points. Sorry the video went over, but that's okay. Here is a visual of what we just did. This is the helicopter view, and I'm going to play the video, and you'll get to see the rotation. And remember now, Two corner points give you a, a value of six. Those are the maxes. And then uh, two points on the boundary give you a value of negative a quarter. You must go below this xy plane. The gray is the xy plane. And they must then uh, be the mid. Here's the video. There's your six and, and um, six twice. And then uh, you can, it's hard to see it, but it's below the xy plane there. We have those other two guys. There, you can see it better there. All right, great. That's it. We're done with this uh, series of videos, three videos on multivariable optimization. What's up next? Same, multivariable optimization, but with extra on top, a constraint. And it leads to what some feel are, is the most difficult section in this class where we have Lagrange multiplier method. It's just an algebra minefield in order to be able to solve an optimization question, find a max or min, absolute, but there is a constraint that must be true. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer, helping you through this uh, multivariable journey. And uh, please comment down below, like and subscribe. And um, I'll be sure to um, reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, if you want a, um, more resources, please just head to my website, calcoach.com. Uh, plenty of resources for you there. And I will uh, see you in the next video. Take care.